How are you doing folks? Ross here again and uh, as my garage gets messier and messier the uh, the old uh, lister is starting to look cleaner and cleaner so uh, here's uh, how the head is looking so far um, paint came out really well which I'm delighted with um, and um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lap in the valves and get them all set up now there are uh, two valves obviously um, but one is thicker than the other okay uh, the thicker one is going to be the exhaust valve because it is the one that has to handle the heat um, the inlet valve is obviously going to run cooler so it's a little bit thinner as well too so um, that being said we still have to lap them both in um, what I did do was when um, I had the uh, when I had the engine apart I took the opportunity to get the, um, the valves repaired uh, on a lathe there was a little skim taken off uh, the face, the ceiling face off them um, just to uh, help them seal a bit better. They were pitted, so they look a bit better now anyway. So hopefully uh, when I lap them in they should look a bit better. So let's see how that goes. Okay, so here's our valves. I did show you the end of it in a previous video, but just to remind you, you can see here side by side. If the uh, camera focuses, there you go. You can kind of see that one is thicker than the other. You get the gist. So anyway, basically um, the exhaust valve is on the opposite side to the spark plug, so that's going to go in there, okay, and the inlet valve goes here. Makes a very satisfying noise actually. But what we're going to do is, we're going to put a bit of valve lap and compound on them. So I'll just push them back out again, and we'll do this one first, the exhaust one. Um, here's the uh, valve lap and compound, we're going to start with the coarse grade and then go on to the fine grade afterwards. So, the idea here is that you want to get a line all the way around uh, that shows that it is sealing. So, let's uh, butter some of this on, and uh, I'll show you what I mean. Sometimes these things are easier to show you than to explain. So there we go, and that one goes in there. Now, okay. And what I'm going to do is use a drill in this case. Because Lister very kindly slotted the top of the valve, so we don't need to use the plunger. So, let's see. Okay, let's see how that's looking. Oh, Jesus. That'd be good dropping the head on the ground. There is a pretty good line all the way around there. I don't know whether you can see it. But, but let's uh, let's go a bit further. And push some more of the paste back onto the ceiling surface. I'm going to try it again. It is very, very important when you're doing this to make sure that you clean off all of the valve lap and paste after you're finished. Now, you can see there there's a line right the way around. Now, it's not great, but it is there, and I think I might just go a little bit more on it. There's a bit of a spot there where it's still not great so I'll push some more valve lock and paste on and then when we're finished we'll do uh, we'll do a go with the fine lock and paste as well too just to polish it all up and get a really good finish in that
see to me the sound changing as it goes around would suggest that it actually isn't even so uh, that's uh, that's something else I'm listening out for okay folks I think we have success here on the exhaust valve anyway it took a lot of lapping actually just to get the pitting out but it's quite hard to get this to focus sometimes but there you go you can actually see the uh, clean line all the way around it okay so that's going to be where it seals so that's grand i'm happy with that so let's do the inlet valve that looks a lot better there's a lot less pitting on that I think that one came good straight away, you know that? Let's, uh, let's do it one more time. I uh, smudged the the um, lapping compound and you need to be able to see it to know whether or not you've got a good line. So let's let do that again. I think we can get it a bit better than that, you know that? Let's keep going at it. There's two ways of doing these type of jobs. You either do it quickly or you do it right. And I tend to be that way as well too in my job. I'm an aircraft mechanic by the way. So uh, I tend to try and um, do things right rather than quickly. Yeah, that's not looking too bad now. Maybe a little bit dull in parts. Let's go again one more time. I think this one's a lot easier to do than the exhaust valve was, but you can expect the exhaust valve to be a bit more pitted than the inlet valve. And anyway, I think the exhaust valve might have been left kind of open for the whole time this engine was in, let's just say, storage, or while it was uh, exposed to the elements. So uh, that's kind of why uh, why it got corroded more so than the inlet. Nice. That'll do. We're happy. It's as good as it's going to get anyway. After the purposes of this exercise, I don't think it needs to be perfect. You know, let's be realistic here. But uh, as close as we can get it is kind of alright with me. Without going and buying new valves and trying to seat them and everything like that too. I'm just not. I'm not that bothered, let's just say, but uh, 
the uh, valve seats in the head now look uh, look pretty good. So um, I think uh, next thing we need to do is we need to give this a good clean, get all of the cutting compound out, and we need to get the valves installed. So let's do that. I tend to skip by the uh, cleaning stuff because you don't need to see all that to be honest with you. You know what it's like cleaning parts. Okay, so I uh, have the uh, valves in now and there's a uh, rag stuffed up underneath the um, underneath the head there now uh, just to keep the valves in place while I put the springs on. So that's the next job. I'm just going to get the springs. Okay, we should have everything we need here. I forgot to clean the retainer pins, but uh, I, I can give them a bit of a wipe and I think they'll be all right. So, we'll do that now. These are the retainers. They're literally just a rectangular pieces of metal and they go through a slot that's caught in the uh, stem of the valve. Simple but effective. They don't do it like that on modern engines. Uh, they have a kind of a, a groove cut in the top of the valve uh, with these kind of things called collets in the top, and they're just they're held in with the spring itself. Um, I don't know whether other lawnmower engines do uh, do things this way anymore, but uh, who knows? Anyway, there's uh, one spring and one spring top on. There's the spring. The spring top goes there. And they both go down over the valve and all I'm going to do literally is just push them down with the uh, long nose pliers and push in the uh, locking tab and hopefully that will do it. Have to find out where the, locking, the groove is in the valve now. Okay there we are. This tool is so handy. It's one done. So I was able to push the valve down with this and literally just push the uh, push the retainer in by hand then. So let's see if that works on this valve here now. Okay, so pushed down and held. And the retainer is in. Just need to centralize it. Now, two valves. Great, so that's the valves reinstalled. That's good news for everybody involved. So let's turn the head over. Next step is to do a quick leak check and see how this fares out. Um, what I'm going to do is use a can of contact cleaner. This stuff, by the way, Halford's electrical contact cleaner is useless. The only thing it's of any use for is this kind of thing. If you need good contact cleaner, I would recommend strongly getting yourself a can of um, Deoxit or uh, Servisol Super 6. There's Deoxit is better again actually, but it's quite expensive and hard to get. So um, yeah, that's just my uh, recommendation there. So uh, you can see for yourselves now.
gonna leave that for a while and see how uh, see how we get on. But uh, so far so good. It certainly didn't piss out anyway, which is always nice. Um, and if it stays there for a little while longer, I'm happy enough. To be honest with you, I'm happy enough now. <laughs> but uh, it was always worth trying anyway. So um, next step is to paint a few more parts and um, then dun 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 the dreaded crankcase. We have to have a look at this beast. I'm going to try and get the flywheel out, the crankshaft out and take the piston out and prep it for cleaning and see how we go from there. Okay, so let's move on to the crankcase. Um, first of all, there's a bit of disassembling to do, and then there's a lot of cleaning to do. So, what I'm going to do first of all is box up all the parts that need to be made. That's a side cover for accessing the crankcase. I'm going to take off the old governor mechanism, and then we'll take off our uh, uh, nice, clean, shiny magneto. Oh, it's a little bit unbalanced at the moment, which is kind of part of the problem. Let's get our oil pump out of the way. It's a handy little 12 volt oil pump I picked up with. Uh, Lido. It's quite useful for things like this. The sludge that came out of the bottom of this engine though was unbelievable. about 45 minutes and um, the uh, contact cleaner spray that I put in the uh, the um, combustion chamber the cylinder head is still there so that's really a good sign I'm delighted with that so um, it means that uh, the valves are seated correctly so let's see how we're looking on this front now first of all I need to take off the uh, chain for the magneto so what we need for that is we need a long nose pliers Those of you who haven't seen, by the way, the reason the magneto is so clean and uh, uh, and it is refitted is because I actually did run the engine before taking the head off. Uh, if you look back on some of my older videos, you'll see that um, it actually did run, which is still I still can't believe. But uh, it didn't run well now, mind, but it ran. So I mean, running at all, to be honest with you, after sitting up for at least I would say thirty years, if not longer. Is an incredible testament to engineering and um, it's one of the reasons I'm really enjoying this project as I said in previous videos as well too is seeing how past masters of engineering did things comparing to modern stuff some of which is just rubbish by comparison and some of it is great as well too I mean, there's some fantastic engineering nowadays too but it all had to come from somewhere didn't it so there's the chain. I actually already did clean that up, so I'm putting it in with the clean parts over there. My view is it's sounding a little bit rough again, but I think what I'll do is I'll just pump some pump a load of grease in there and hopefully it'll be alright. Um again it turns at what 350 RPM, so let's not get too uh, too worried about it. that go underneath the magneto uh, to set the chain tension. They need to be cleaned up as well too. Yeah, that's that. So put that over there. Get our arms away. And it's set about taking off the governor. 
I'm gonna turn this around so you can you see a bit more of what's going on. Sorry if you don't always see what's going on here, but uh, sometimes, uh, you know, it can be a bit difficult to try and illustrate these things. Two push rods on there. That's the nut and washer for the magneto drive sprocket. The new uh, governor assembly that I have doesn't actually have this, so you better heat that. And this would be a nice opportunity to try it. The new pullers I bought on it. <laughs> And of all things, wish. But it doesn't look half bad, to be honest with you. Sometimes you get good stuff off that side, apparently. I've only started using it recently. So, uh, right, let's see now. Um, finding a suitable size socket for the bleeding Whitworth bleeding tools. It's wrecking my head, to be honest with you. It's the one thing about this whole operation I'm not enjoying Whitworth. So, uh, anyway. That's 13. And that's 12. 12 would be too tight and 13. Oh, 12 fits. Well, that is the thing. What size it actually is, Whitworth, I have no idea. I can tell you that uh, 12 would be probably somewhere between 7, 16 and a half in the AF measurements. But uh, I have a decent set of AF tools. Um, as I said, I am a, an aircraft mechanic, uh, specifically a, I build turbine engines, so that's kind of a, my line of work during the day, but uh, um, in, in the aviation industry is predominantly um, Imperial, we have Boeing to thank for that one, so um, they stuck with it, but to be honest with you, it's one of those things, it's a, it's a mild inconvenience when you start out in the industry and you just get used to it and once you build up a set of tools it's nice because of the fact that you have a separate set of tools for your aircraft work than you would for your kind of tinkering at home with your car sort of work so there is that i mean maybe cloud is a silver lining i suppose you could look at it that way so it looks to me like on this what happened was the uh, the housing for the Magneto, or sorry, not the Magneto, the um, governor actually got shattered. Uh, there's remnants of it left here. So uh, it was fortunate that I was able to pick up a second uh, a second housing. Um, actually, the guy who, bought, who I bought the engine of uh, sold me it. So uh, I was able to get uh, everything I needed off him. I should have seen that coming. <laughs> right, okay, we're going to have to come up with something else in that one. Um, next will be taking out the flywheel, and taking off the flywheel anyway. So what I need to do is I need to find a way of just counterweighting this for the moment, and I will uh, prop everything up properly. Let's get that out of the way. We do not need it. Oh my God! That is one dirty crankcase. I think at this point all I'm going to do is I'm going to just spin the engine around and take the whole flywheel crankshaft assembly out in one go. But uh, let's put our nuts back in place so we don't lose them first of all. Of course I have new gaskets for this. I've got a full gasket set for the engine. The only gasket I haven't got yet is actually the head gasket but we will pick one of them up. The uh, asbestos head gasket that was on it is obviously not getting reused. Now, I'm half tempted to put it on its back with the board and everything, but the problem is this oil is going to go everywhere if I do that, so maybe it's not the best idea in the world. It's remarkable actually being able to see uh, 
the inner workings of an engine in this great detail. Um, I'll just give a peek here and see if it's You know what? I'm not even going to try and take this off. It's just going to be too much of a hassle. Um, because I have another crankshaft pulley uh, flywheel assembly over there. And to be honest, what I'm going to try and do is just use that whole thing. And if I want to take the smaller pulley off this at a later stage, you can worry about it then. The nuts in behind the flywheel are actually quite accessible, so the whole uh, flywheel and crankshaft will come out as one unit when I uh, take these out. And uh, then we'll be left basically with the crankcase with the piston stuck up inside it. And it uh, should be a bit easier to work with then at that stage and a lot, a lot easier to move around. Because if there is some serious weight in this engine. It's 135 kilos for any of, it, any of you who didn't know. So far, and I'm going to completely jinx myself in this whole thing, I haven't found a single nut or bolt actually seized in. They've all been loose, if anything. So it's entirely possible that somebody may have stripped this engine before me and just put it all back together loosely. Which would be amazing if it was a practical wrap. Um, but uh, well, it's early days yet. I still have a lot to go. There were two broken bolts in the uh, in the head, which I did have to remove. But I didn't break them. They were already broken when I got the engine. No, honestly, they were. <laughs> I didn't. I did not break them. But uh, there's also the uh, drain tap as well too needs to be removed, and I have tried that with an easy out, and it's not moving. So I think that's going to be a machine shop job. Um, what I might do is try and shell it out a little bit first with a larger drill and see if maybe I can just kind of remove it that, that way then but you know it's uh, it's kind of brass it'll probably break up so you are to shot but not the crankcase is going to be going in for sandblasting anyway so the lads in the machine shop there will be able to do that for me too I'm sure so uh, maybe I'll just go down that route and save myself the hassle. I have a new drain tap for the engine. Okay, so there's four nuts off. Is there a fifth? Not sure, to be honest with you. The wrist is going to be hard to get at the way the engine is positioned on this board now. Was ever going to come out, it was going to come out that way, wasn't it? Nice four nuts. We'll be putting them back on the studs in a minute.
that is heavy. Right. There's some fairly knackered bearings. Don't think they're going to be reusing them. What do you reckon? Find it interesting actually that they decided to use roller bearings in this engine rather than uh, sleeve bearings, but uh, I don't ever. It's quite good actually. Find it now in a minute. That uh, crankshaft wasn't letting go without a fight, hence the uh, lump hammer to take it out. Then again, it's been there for quite a long time. This engine was built in 1950, so who knows if it's ever been out. The nice thing is, the engine's not falling over on top of me anymore. After this, we'll take the piston out and have a look at that. See if we need new rings or not. I'm hoping we won't because rings are actually pricey enough. Not massively expensive, but if it needs it, I'll give them. I'll give it to I'll give them to it. But it's you know, spend the money on the uh, the other bits it needs first. Okay. So we push the piston up and out. Clean and that might just be all right. Let's give, give it a wipe. I'll show you it. Okay, so what I'm looking for in the big end bearing here. Which is this lad, have you ever heard of anybody referring to worn big ends? That's this lad. The bearing that goes the bearing from the conrod, which is this, that goes onto the crankshaft. Uh, and the crankshaft is the part that turns the, the um up and down motion, the oscillating motion into a rotational motion. Words fail me at the moment, I'm sure there's a way of des describing that that sounds more specific more Jesus, I can't talk. More scientific, but in a moment that'll do, you get the gist. It's like your feet on the pedals of a bicycle. So, now what I'm looking for is to see if there's any any untoward motion in the, the uh, small end, which is the uh, bearing up inside the, uh, the crown of the piston. There's a bit side to side tiny bit of rock in it but to be honest with you not so much that I'd actually be worried about it and I think to be honest with you by the time I take the piston rings out the gudgeon pin which is uh, this lad here and um, the conrod and clean it all up I think that's it that piston may actually be serviceable which is great the little spike on the bottom is your oil pump funnily enough it literally just splashes oil around the uh, crankcase and just sp sprays it up all over the place and it just creates a mist of oil inside there which is how everything stays oily there's no oil pump in this engine really I mean that's it, <laughs> it's not an oil pump, it's, a, it's called a, a, an oil uh, splasher scientific name you know they really uh, pushed the boat out when they came up with that one so what we'll, have a do, what we'll do now is, when, is uh, we'll take the gudgeon pin out and have a look at the piston, uh, the small end bearings of the conrod, and uh, go from there. But to be honest with you, I'm looking, I'm pretty, uh, pretty hopeful on this. Do you know what actually we'll do is I bring I bring this in and we'll give it a clean in, uh, in the um, parts washer and give it a good job. That do a good job on it that way. I think the ultra the proper ultrasonic bath will actually do a nice job on that. I love that. Rubbish is coming out of there. It's a steel piston. So, more stuff between it, goes in there. So, 
let's get the bore a wipe and see how that's looking and we'll give it a run with the honing, the honing tool and see how we're looking after that there's, there's no point in running the honing tool before you've um, or after you've cleaned it because you're, you're going to make a, a mess anyway or at least some something resembling a mess and it's better off to kind of do all the dirty work and then clean it up afterwards so let's get you over here and you can have a look inside everything okay so there's the bore You can see the groove down in the bottom of the, uh, I suppose it's like a windage tray or something like that, where the uh, oil thrower operates. And um, you can see all the silt and dirt and everything down in the water jacket. That'll all have to be cleaned out. Uh, the crankcase is full of sludge and gunge, but nothing that we can't clean out. It's very mucky in there. But, uh, yeah, that's why we're rebuilding it. If it was perfect in there, would we be rebuilding it? No, probably not. So, uh, yeah, there's your broken um, uh, drain tap, which I still have had no success removing. And I think I'll try and remove this part, and see if that comes out. Of course, we'd end up taking a lump out of the side of the crankcase, and that would upset me greatly, <laughs> because I did not have a second crankcase. Anyway, let's get set up and... Uh, Give that a home. Okay. Trusty drill. Ah, yeah. That's coming up pretty good. Quite happy with that. I'll show you now in a minute. But it's uh, it's definitely um, taking the roughness off it. So let's uh, let's keep going. Okay, so there is a bit of wear in the uh, in the bore, but to be honest with you, I don't think I'm going to be too worried about that. She's looking pretty good. Um, you could probably see some of the dust coming off it there, but uh, let's uh, give it another crack. Okay, so I think that's as far as we're going to go on that. Let's uh, have a quick look and just 
hang up my own and kill. I don't know when the next time is I'll use that, but I always have it now. First of all, that's probably about two hours in. And to be honest with you, I think that contact cleaner's actually evaporated, which is great. So um, we have a nice uh, sealed up head anyway there. Um, let's get our contact cleaner. I did say it was useless, but it does actually have some uses. Cleaning stuff uh, like this, it's actually quite good for. But uh, as far as electrical contact cleaning is concerned, there are far better alternatives out in the market. That's the point I was trying to make, I suppose. What do you reckon, guys? Will we be able to live with that? I think that's actually going to seal up quite well. Time will tell. When we put the engine back together, we do it again, we do a compression test, we'll know soon enough. Um, I mean, beyond this, all you're, you're into really is a, an oversized piston and uh, uh, machining out the, the case and all that, which I am not doing, I can assure you. Okay, so what's next on the agenda? Um, basically, what we need to do now is we need to clean up the crankcase and we need to prepare it uh, to accept um, all the new parts. So, um, yeah, that's gonna be a, a laborious task, but um, I'll get it done in the next couple of weeks. Um, in the meantime, Put other bits in there as well too that need cleaning. And that's our other flywheel complete with crankshaft, which sounds a hell of a lot better than I just kneeled on a hammer by the way there, and that was not fun. Okay, so there's old Right. And this is new that's a lot better okay so that's what's going on what's going in and um, I think I might actually just clean that up as an assembly because I don't fancy trying to pull out the jib key in that uh, or gib key I still don't know how to pronounce that correctly Um. so uh, yeah uh, that's uh, that's what's happening there anyway so anyway folks uh, i think i'm going to leave it there at that in uh, this video we've accomplished quite a bit actually to be honest with you i was quite happy lapped in the valves honed the cylinder got the crankcase stripped down i painted up the um painted up the governor mechanism and we've kind of assessed everything so from this point forward it's really just a case of getting the crankshaft all cleaned up getting the crankcase all cleaned up um machining out that brass tap um, and uh, yeah, I mean we're we're on the home straight then. So um, don't forget to like and subscribe, and um, I'll keep you updated with my progress as well too. I have other little projects in the, uh, on the go as well too in the background. There's a little spoiler. Those uh, seats are out of a Mazda uh, out of a Mazda RX-8, and I do not have a Mazda RX-8. I got them from the local scrapyard. And they're going into my Beetle, so. Let's see how that works out. That's going to be another video, but it'll be in a few weeks away.